let, let's just jump into it right now because this is beautiful. This is why I thoroughly believe that if you don't know how to be a good friend, you will never know how to be a good girl, uh, girlfriend or boyfriend. Hmm. Because right there, what you just did yeah. is instrumental in any healthy relationship yeah. between mother and son, between mm-hmm. friends, between lovers, between a coworker and a manager. Like that is basic one-on-one relationship mm-hmm. foundational stuff that you unpack. What is up everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. No, like, let's just get to it. The whole sa- secular sacred divide. There is no distinction in, in the scriptures. Some of us have trust issues with God. And right, some right. of us, yeah, it's like, does God really got us? You can't engage the culture with the gospel that first has not engaged you. Like, you know how people are like, oh, that's just who I am. No. No. <laughs> Shaping the code. What is up, everyone? We are back with another episode of Shaping the Culture. I hope all is well with you all. Um, I'm here with not necessarily a guest. What what would you call yourself at this point? I don't know, man. Season season regular. (laughs) The series regular. series regular a reoccurring reoccurring guest guest. yeah yeah something like that none other than parker yes sir and um if you don't know who he is by now then well you just don't know do your googles (laughs) do your googles um he's usually the guy that's behind the camera sometimes he's on the mic behind the camera other times he's just behind a laptop just behind making you look good trying making sure we get the content to the people that's it that's it we're for the people we are we we're for you all you know what i'm saying and um we're we're hanging out today and so we'll see what the lord does with this conversation and where he takes it um see if it says on patreon or goes public we have no idea we have no (laughs) idea and so uh yeah how you doing though how's life uh Overall, I would say life is good, bro. I'm I'm busy. Uh, I think yeah, between I mean, yes, you are uh, <laughs> this guy. Between y'all don't know how busy this man is. Between work, yeah, uh, like my regular nine to five, my Bruce Wayne job. Yeah, uh, I think like side gigs. So whether that's editing podcasts or doing graphic design, if it's my own music, trying to prep stuff and prepare. Uh, if it's stuff at church week to week, if it's uh, conferences we got coming up. If it's trying to make sure I'm consistent in my friendships and building with people and communicating, uh, trying to walk with people. Uh, yeah, bro. It's, uh, it's, it's busy. Yeah. You got a lot going on. By the way, if you're here and you need a podcast producer, editor, thumbnail creator, hit me up. He's got a business now. I do slide in his DMS, slide in my DMS for that. And that only, (laughs) thank you very much. And, uh, he shall give you some rates, some, I will. I will. Some rates that will blow your mind away. One way or the other. (laughs) You never know, I guess, right? Uh, But yeah, that's what's up. You are keeping busy, and we do got a lot going on. It's it's, it's been good, bro. It's uh, it's teaching me a lot. It's teaching me about time management. Yeah. Uh, It's making me very dependent on the Lord. Yeah. Um, I think you and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I think just when there's... um, yeah, in a leadership meeting, there are just a lot of decisions that are coming up that need to be made. And we were just mm-hmm. talking about how mm-hmm. that creates like a, a need to like fast and pray and things like that. And I was thinking about how um, in scripture, a lot of times when Jesus was in front of a crowd or doing mm-hmm. ministry, mm-hmm. like he made it a point to like separate himself, and yeah. like spend time with the Lord. And so, yeah, I definitely feel that because there are things I want to I feel like I have to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, OK, God, help me to depend on you and not feel like I have to do all these things because they need to get done. Yeah, but I can't I can't do it on my own. Yeah, that's actually so a lot of the times when we talk about prayer, we talk about it in the context of need or obscurity. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have also learned that prayer is important when you've got mad options. Yeah, because I've I've, we we made a joke about this. Sometimes when you're in need or in obscurity or you don't got a lot going on, Mm -hmm. you pray for peace. But in a lot of ways the one option you got is probably God nudging you in that direction. Right. right? It's mm-hmm. like, well, 
what other op, what other choice are you gonna yeah. you're gonna make? It's provision. It's, it's not really an option. It's just kind of <laughs> that's it. That's what you way. said. Yeah, it's provision, not an option. But it is when God begins to open doors and opportunities come, and, mm-hmm. and you got to learn how to discern His will, discern His heart in, in another way, on another level. Yeah. Um, because not every open door is from the Lord, mm-hmm. and um, and not every open door is good for the soul. Yeah. And not every open door is going to serve your family, your faith the things that God has called you to steward over well. Mm -hmm. And so you got to make sure that you are um, aligning yourself with where God has you in the season that you're in. I think that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. And so prayer allows you to kind of think clear and, and, and make space for that. Um, I do want to acknowledge we are watching, we are live right now. So if you're watching the rebroadcast, what's up, but for all of you guys that are in here live, we want to make this interactive, leave a comment behind. We want to say what's up. Uh, we'll probably do some Q&A later, later on a little bit, but uh, I think we're going to have a much needed conversation. And this is something that you and I have been talking about a lot lately. Yeah. And I, I struggle to tackle topics surrounding uh, dating and relationships because I do know, <laughs> I do know, I do know that if, if I want to get views up, if I want to get more engagement, why are we still single? We, we, we could talk about single dating as a Christian dating as a Christian. Don't take too much or politics. Those, those oh, are Jesus. If you want or react to somebody, a Christian figure, if you want engagement, talk about some politics. If you, you want to get some Christians in the comment section, <laughs> my word. And that's been a struggle for me because that's a temptation of mine. I'm yeah. like, all right, I know what the algorithm feeds. Mm-hmm. I know what the algorithm wants. Mm-hmm. Do I want to take that route or do I want to talk about Sabbath? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do I want to talk about relationships or do I want to talk about what really is going on in my life right yeah. now or what God yeah. is teaching me? And so I'm very mindful in not putting out a lot of content that's mm-hmm. hot or easy to get engagement on yeah. Yeah. because I want to build an authentic brand for all you guys who actually watch these episodes. We thank you so much. What we want to do is build a real audience, people that will rock with you people that love you for real, for real, people that like benefit and, and take much encouragement from the, from the stuff that gets talked about on this platform and this mm-hmm. podcast. And so, yeah, I, I don't really want to talk about stuff that just is hot and fleeting. Like I want to build something genuine and authentic. And yeah. so um, I do struggle to talk about stuff like dating because I do mm-hmm. know that's going to draw in people and not always for yeah. the right reasons. Yeah. But for whatever not for whatever re- i know why but you and i have been talking about dating a lot lately mm-hmm. but specifically friendship in dating yeah and i want to kind of tackle that so twofold what it looks like to find a friend in your partner mm-hmm. and what it looks like to assess your partner's friends because mm. <laughs> those two are extremely important and i would argue that they don't make or break it for me at least for me, at least, I won't say that's true of everyone, but as for me in my house, and yeah. I have I have discovered, bro, that uh, the kind of friend that they are, your partner is in their friend group, mm-hmm. will spill over, bleed into the kind of friend they will be to you. Yeah, and um, yeah, we've just had a lot of conversations around that for whatever mm-hmm. reason. We talked about putting it on wax and 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 and, and having a podcast conversation around it. So that's what the topic is today. It's not. Yeah. For a, a bunch of engagement, it's, it's really like this is real life it's for life. us right now. This is Tuesday. I think <laughs> literally in the last week and a half, that's probably been the number one thing. Probably. We, we've yeah. discussed and mm-hmm. talked about. So you don't get a lot of overflow from this. But um, before we kind of jump in, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave mm-hmm. a comment behind. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how you're liking the content, how mm-hmm. you're disliking the content. We accept all. As long as you're typing in the comment section. That's it. That's all that matters. By the way, I don't know what it is, but negative comments don't affect me. You're different. They're like bots. I see it when I low-key, I be, I be contemplating a response, <laughs> and then I just delete it. I look at it, and then I laugh. I used to delete them, but I'm like, let's keep it around. I used to delete them. <laughs> I, I did. And then we just got to a point where um, there's too much to delete. But. I mean, that's good. Another way you can filter out haters is by signing up for Patreon. You know what I'm saying? That then part. It's, well, that doesn't filter out everybody because you can, as long as you pay, you can, you can get in. Yeah. But, I mean, that's how people But support. who's going to pay to hate? Some people do. That's very true. Some people pay that's just to get, to get inside information. That's very true. But. That's very look, true. As long as the check clear. <laughs> you guys, whatever, whatever you want to spend your money on. As long as the gospel is preached. That's what my Bible says. <laughs> that's what Paul says. You know what I'm saying? Philippians 2. He said, who am I? You know? 
but he does address it at the end. He's like, nah, no, for real though. Like he does. Don't. He does. Yeah. Anyways, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, uh, I'm excited. So <laughs> why are you laughing, bro? It's, I want to lead this conversation by asking you. So we were at a lake one of the nights this week and yeah. you made a comment about how this particular topic has been on your mind a lot more than usual. Yeah. And you were telling me how you find yourself in a very peculiar situation, recognizing that a lot of your experiences are unique and mm-hmm. not shared. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean by that? What did you mean by that? And what were you getting at? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that, um, friendship is something that I, I care about very deeply. Yeah. Um, I think most people do to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, but I think that I'm a very relationship oriented pe- person. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that are in my life, I love really hard. I love really deeply. I don't want things to, um, you know, be broken or things to be damaged and like life happens and stuff like that. But ideally in my mind, I'm like, if something good is put together, it should be like this. Yeah. Like if things transition, okay, cool. People move away, whatever, but it shouldn't like be broken. It should like stay. Yeah. And so I think that I'm also blessed in that the relationships I have around me function in that way. Like I, I don't have, I wouldn't say I have a lot of friends, but I have a few very like good, good friends, like good friends that people yeah. would say like our best friends for me. I'm just like, this is the standard. This you is just a saying? friend. Yeah. It's just like, this is how it should be. Can we talk about that? What? Yeah. Real quick. I don't mean to interrupt, <laughs> but I think that's a valid point because yeah. a friend is a friend. Yeah. They're yeah. they're in my book, in mm-hmm. my eyes, there's a friend and then there's a companion mm-hmm. acquaintance slash peer. Sure. And that's it. Yeah. Like why? Why do you think we go from like friend to best? What What, what do you think that is? Is it like level yeah. of or layers of intimacy? I don't know. I think so. I think it could just depend on on how you categorize things. Yeah. I think some people might mean the same thing, the same thing, but use different words. Okay. Um. And so when I was I don't know ten, eleven, mm-hmm. for me a best friend was like, oh, this is like my main person. This is like we're always doing stuff together. We can we tell each other secrets. We spend time at each other's houses and da 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 da. Yeah. And so I think as I've gotten older, I think one um. I think one from from hurt, my perspective has changed mm. because I think just because you view someone as a best friend, they don't always view you that way. That's just my, my personal that's a word. Uh, process. Yeah. And so that has um, forced me to uh, have a very sober perspective about the way that I'm engaging with people. Yeah. So because I might just be having a great time and I'm like, man, yeah. hey, listen to me, they do that and such and such. I mean, that doesn't mean that they see me in the same way and that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that the older that I've gotten, I think that I've gained a perspective of what friendship should look like mm. um biblically also what i prefer it to look like and seeing where um my personal preference and description aligns and seeing like okay this is a proper view yeah. of what a friendship should be yeah um and so i think that now i'm just like okay this is just a friend i think a best friend in my mind is like that's the person i'm gonna marry that's mm. like yes my friends know me they trust me and stuff like that but this is someone who yeah i'm intentionally intimate with we know that we are intimate with each other not specifically physically but like emotionally mentally spiritually all those types of things there's a level of access that they have that other people may not yeah um and i think that when you are for me like if i'm married to you why wouldn't i want you to be my best friend right you know what I'm right saying? right um so yeah that's a distinction that i have found i think for some people um they're just like friendship maybe just isn't that deep or it just looks a little bit different yeah and so for them a friend is like oh we know each other we can spend time together we can be in the same spaces and we have some commonalities, but my best friend, that's the person who knows this, who knows that. And for me, that's just like, I yeah. do that with a few different people. The group right. is small. Right. There's a few different people who are like, I can hit up whenever. I know they're right. into the call. I know right. I can ask like, hey, this is what I'm going through. Am I tripping or am I not? And they'll be like, hey, bro, just like, yo, calm down. And like, hey, no, nah, I think you should talk to this person about right. whatever, whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, that's been my experience with why there's like some different r- differentiation. Yeah, that's um, good. That's yeah. a great, that's a great call. Out. And and I do want to acknowledge that I do think that there are levels to intimacy. For sure. Um, and I like how you talked about the difference between the friendships that you have in your friend circle and the friendship that you have within your marriage. Mm-hmm. I do think that that's a great distinction. And I understand that the layers and the levels of intimacy that you will discover and be a part of and share in, in your marriage will be different than even mm-hmm. some of your closest friends that right. are just your friends you know um the reason why i struggle with that or i called that out or i was like what is that even is because i think sometimes you know 
I think maybe it's just how we define friendship. Sure. I think sometimes when someone describes to me what a friend is, I'm like, oh, that's that's an acquaintance, mm. you know, like a companion, somebody that you hang out with, somebody that you watch Inside Out 2 with, mm. <laughs> someone you play basketball with, someone you yeah. travel with. But, you know, to me, a friend is someone that, you know, knows you more intimately than maybe some of the hobbies that you have. Sure. Or, some of the things that you enjoy doing or some of the interests that you have. Mm. I think a friend is someone that just naturally knows you on a deeper level. Yeah. Someone that knows your dreams, mm. someone that knows your fears, someone that knows your insecurities, someone that knows your strengths, uh, someone who is willing to not just know those things, but shoulder mm -hmm. the weight of, of some of that stuff. Yeah. Someone that will encourage you in that, someone that will challenge you and hold you accountable to the things that you've, you know, you've um, laid out for yourself. I think a friend is, is just someone that you can laugh with and cry with. Mm -hmm. And so when someone says, this is my best friend, I guess maybe the way I've made the, 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 um, where I differentiate would be maybe this one, this person is someone I've done it for longer with, or this one is someone sure. that, you know, when you're doing that kind of, life with a friend for longer you just have more history they know mm -hmm. you in ways that maybe a recent friend who does that stuff with you doesn't know you yeah uh, like i don't know maybe that's a way to differentiate yeah i think so and i think like i said i think as i'm thinking through like my past and um distinctions that i've had in friendships because of what i've been through yeah. I, there have been times where i'm like all right best friend is just reserved in this box i'm not right, right. i don't want to because i don't want to place an expectation on someone yeah. and then have that met have that not be met in such a way that it's damaging and right. then feel like, man, okay, well, then let me just put this in a special area. Let me, yeah. let me designate this for a specific thing. Yeah. But I do think that time plays a role. So I know like you and like Yosef are like best friends. Y'all have known each other almost like 30 years. Yeah. And so I think that um, some of it, is, I think is just like how we all classify things. But I yeah. do think like you also don't have like 12 best friends. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the other thing too. Mm -hmm. I think that, some people have like, oh, that's my best friend. Well, this is also my best friend. I'm like, yeah. okay, everybody can't be your best friend. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I think some of it too is just like distinction and just how we kind of categorize different things, but time plays a big role too. Yeah, because some would say they're a best friend if I can share intimate things with them. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's that's a friend. Yeah. You right. know? Well, I can't share something intimate with them. Either they're working on being, like you, are, you guys are establishing a friendship mm -hmm. or there's no trust there mm -hmm. or they're just they're meant to be a companion. Yeah, but like yeah. I it's hard for me to say that someone is a friend right. and and I can't share my life with that person. Yeah, and I think it's it's challenging when not everybody holds that same perspective. Y yeah. Because I think that when you and I think you you've I know that you've experienced this and you and I have both gone through this at different times, but like I think when you are a good listener or you know how to engage someone or just like make mm -hmm. someone feel present or seen, that's that that makes them feel a shift in the relationship so it'll be oh i thought we were friends because we we've known we've known each other a long time or right. we shared such and such and i'm like yeah. you shared <laughs> i asked some questions <laughs> like i understand like the, the situation a little bit more i haven't shared anything yeah, yeah i haven't yeah. really talked a whole yeah. lot and sometimes you want to share but they're not asking the questions yeah and so for me i don't i yeah. i'm it's if you're if i don't see you as an active friend i'm generally not going to just volunteer information because right. i don't want to this could just be a personal thing, but I don't yeah. want to be like, well, what I think is like, uh, well, just, okay, you're talking. I want you to talk. Let me ask questions. Like you clearly have this on your mind. Right, Let me right. like pull this out a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, bro. When there's a that. mismatch. There, there uh, is. Okay. Yeesh. The, yeesh. Yeah. The <laughs> so that, that's very true. We'll probably come back to that later on, but I interrupted you because I, I wanted to make sure we highlighted the distinction you made. And I think it's an interesting one, but you were getting at this idea that you've noticed that in your life mm. that you have been fortunate enough to. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I just been blessed to have some really good friends around me. And so I don't think that that's a common experience. Um, mm. or at least the people that I've engaged with, um, that's not super common. Yeah. So I think I have people who, I know people that know a lot of people that are known by a lot of people that would say they have a lot of acquaintances and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that for me, what I value, I th what I think is really cool is that I have not only people who 
are from a faith based perspective can keep me accountable, can walk with me, can pray with and for me, yeah. um, can help me to unpack things. But also like we can go to the movies, we can go out to eat, we can I don't hoop, but if I wanted to, I can go hoop with people if we are just He really like, doesn't hoop guys. I don't, but there's a reason. Praise God. Uh but just like six we, foot yeah. something for no reason, bro. I just I put it to we, use we, in other ways. We could have no. used you in the paint, bro. Anyways, God ahead. had other plans. You know what I mean? He can be glorified in any way. That's right. Oh my God. That's true. Uh I, but I yeah, I think that uh, <laughs> This guy, you jealous? You want to talk about it? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad at my height. Like, right. I'm 5'10". You know That's what I'm good, saying? Bro. But some people aren't. Imagine if I had three, four inches on me. It's probably to keep you humble. Probably. Because it's, it, look, come on. Man, I was about to say something. Anyway. Yeah. Moving forward. Just one more inch out of, you know, two more. So you want to be six feet? Six two has always been my goal. Just put some little lifts in your, yeah. in your shoe. What are you, six four? Six three. Depends who you ask. I don't know. You really could have been useful in the paint. Anyways, That's go crazy. ahead. Y'all see how he said I'm not useful because I'm not doing something he thinks I should do? Crazy. Uh, but yeah, so I think I think that um, just the way that I walk out, um, that people are able to walk through life with me and walk out friendship with me, I think is really, really cool. It's a blessing. Yeah. Um, it challenges me. It makes me better. There's people that I can ask, like, hey, what do you think my gifting is? Where do you think I could be better? Where should I be corrected? How yeah. am I, like, what do you think I'm doing good? Like, whatever, and all those types of things. And so I think that both just like in day to day personhood, but also as a person of faith, I'm able to grow and flourish and do really, really well. Yeah. Um, and also doing that in a very mature way. Mm. Um, that's something that's really important to me. And so as I have talked with um, other friends or other people that I know, I think just the way that they'll talk about people that they engage with is just a little bit different, whether it's, oh, we're mad at each other, but we didn't talk about such and such. I'm like, how are y'all? If you're mad, then talk to them. If they hurt you, like, just, like, bring it up. Not that that's easy. Yeah. But, like, in times that, like, I've had an issue with something that you've done or that uh, Yoni has done or whoever. Yeah. It'll just be like, hey, yo. And even, like, me being honest, I, I don't really know how to bring this up. But just, like, I didn't really like that this happened. Yeah. Um, This is how I'm feeling. I don't yeah. really have a question. I don't have a solution. But this is this is where I'm at. And for the sake of the relationship, I'm doing that. Because, yeah. like, I care about you enough to let you know, like, hey, I don't. We're not right right now, and I want that to be fixed. But in order for that to happen, I need to let you know what you did that, that hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So let, let's just jump into it right now because this is beautiful. This is why I thoroughly believe that if you don't know how to be a good friend, you will never know how to be a good girl, uh, girlfriend or boyfriend. Hmm. Because right there, what you just did yeah. is instrumental in any healthy relationship yeah. between mother and son, between mm -hmm. friends, between lovers, between a coworker and a manager. Like that is basic one-on-one -on -one relationship mm -hmm. foundational stuff that you unpacked. Yeah. Yet I know so many friendships and relationships that do not know how to go. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, because I know this can be difficult, so I don't want to sure. make yeah. it seem like this should just be a given. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it is a given. It's it's a simple principle. It's not simple to walk out. No, but it's a very it's like a it's very baseline. It's foundational. It's foundational. And so if you don't know how to sit across from someone and say, "Hey, bro, mm -hmm. when you said X, Y, Z." this hurt me and this hurt me in this way. Mm -hmm. And this hurt me, especially coming from you because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. Bro. First of all, I think that's how you develop a deeper intimate relationship with someone. But, but secondly, you know, one thing I've discovered in my own life, I don't mean to project is a lot of the times the reasons why friendships have falling outs or relationships have falling outs mm -hmm. is because of unmet uncommunicated mm -hmm. expectations so somebody has been hurting me and yet they don't know they've been hurting me mm -hmm. and if i don't have the confidence or maybe i don't feel safe enough yeah because that's, that's a whole another factor i know this, this is a nuanced conversation but if i don't feel safe enough to sit down and say hey when we were at the function last week and 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 you made fun of my bald head <laughs> Let me, because I want to say this too. I think a real friend knows your triggers, right? This is what I yeah. mean about like yeah. when a friend knows your insecurities, your fears, your dreams. Like you can maybe make fun of my height because sure. I'm good, 
but you know that bald spot yeah. or that yeah. uh, the bald joke hits a soft spot is a soft spot <laughs> for me, you know? Yeah. And so when you call that out, it's not mm-hmm. funny for me. Yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't appreciate that you did that. And now what that does is that friend says, Oh, snaps either. Like I didn't know my bad or my goodness. I forgot. I'm so yeah. sorry. I just got carried away. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it gives a person an opportunity to love you well, yeah. because now they know. Mm-hmm. And then two, they have the opportunity to right their wrong. Mm-hmm. But like, if you're not seeing this on a friendship level, how can you experience this? Yeah. Cause here's what I hear. This is, this is what I hear in my ear as people are maybe rebuttaling me in the, in, in, in their mind as they're listening to this podcast It's like, well, it's different with a girlfriend versus a friend because with a girlfriend, it's a more intimate relationship. And so I feel more comfortable sharing with my girlfriend that she hurt me than I do with a friend. What, what would be the response to that? Like, why is that? I feel like that's, that's a little backwards. I mean, I, that, I get it, it. I get it. But why is that backwards? Because I think it's backwards, too. Because I, I think in my mind, my depending on stages. OK, I think uh, like a romantic relationship and a friendship. I wouldn't say that one is necessarily higher than another. Yeah, I, they get prioritized differently in different seasons. What I will say is that in my mind, if something is new, right, if I'm if I'm starting to talk to somebody or whatever, I would say that that's a very pivotal point to make sure that you and your friends are good because in the event that something doesn't work out right. or it works out really, really bad, yeah. you have something to fall back on. Right. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. You're if, saying you got receipts. If if while I'm building, I'm cutting everybody off, I'm not communicating, I'm, mm-hmm. oh, sorry, so-and-so's calling. Not, and, like, again, stuff happens, right? Yeah. But if it's always like, sorry, guys, I'm all in with her, right? Sorry, sorry, I'm all in with him, whatever your situation is. That you're not like <laughs> you're kind of bankrupting, you know what I'm saying? For real, and bro. so like when it comes time where you gotta like, hey, I need help. Now a good friend is gonna be there. Yeah, they're gonna be like, oh, look, I'm here also. Hey man, you haven't called me for six yeah, months. Yeah, like oh, you got my number. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey bro, you good? Let's pray. Okay. Also, what's up, bro? Yeah. It's been, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But point being, like, if you're not investing to, if you're not investing in any relationship. It's like it's not gonna be there. There's nothing right. to pull from when you leave it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a I forget what song it was. There's some song where it's like I didn't I didn't invest in my relationships and so like it was it was I couldn't cash in anything mm. when I really needed it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it's ba- it's backwards to say like, oh I I only do this with my girlfriend, but not with my friends. <laughs> yeah. Like both are important. Like Very friendship important. is because what happens like when you and your girlfriend are arguing, who are you gonna go to like when you need to vent? Yeah. Who you, who's going to check you to be like, hey, bro, you need to go apologize. Or who's going to be like, hey, you know what? Yeah. You need to leave, bro. Like, yeah. this isn't this isn't safe for you. This yeah. isn't right for you. This isn't healthy for you. Or who's going to pray for your relationship? You know what I'm saying? You know? and, and so if you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're so busy cutting yourself off and being like, oh, I'm only going to invest intimately in this romantic relationship and not like friends that like know you and love you and trust you, which is also why it's important to have good friendships because when you're making important decisions like that, yeah. you have people who can like, counsel you and stuff like that yeah but if you're only doing it in your romantic relationships and not in your friendships it's just like how what happens if that person isn't there that's the first place that my mind goes but can let me add to that yeah. I, I um i have a good friend of mine him and his wife when they first got married they were struggling tremendously hmm. and they were isolated they were in a church context they were in a city where um, they, they were just on their own in an island. They didn't have many married friends. They didn't have married friends outside each other. And they were just getting into different fights and they were getting into different disagreements and they just, things weren't clicking. Yeah. And so they're like, we should go to therapy. Hmm. So before they went to therapy, they took like this, I don't know if it's like a consultation or like they did some tests to try to make sense of where they're at now so that they can get the further help that they need. Yeah. And when they took this test, they discovered that their problem was they didn't have community. Crazy. So the test results came back and the, it, and the test results showed that if you both just had your own individual friends and, f- <laughs> and if you guys had friends that you did life with together as a yeah. married couple, it would cut your problems down mm. in half. Yeah. And so not just in a dating relationship, but even in marriage, there's this misconception that we have, like my, my, my wife, my husband, will be the only friend I need, will be the only relationship I need. Yep. And that's not true. Like your marriage and your relationships will suffer if you don't have anyone to share that with. And so yeah. to double down on what you're saying, who is going to challenge your, mm-hmm. like when, when, when 
when you as a husband come and you're telling me, yo, you and your girl got into this, who's there to be like, oh, she was tripping or nah, Parker, that was actually you, bro. Yeah. You yeah. need to get this together and you need to fix that and you need mm-hmm. to apologize mm-hmm. for this and you need to step up there or dog, I'm so sorry. Like, that's not fair. You don't deserve this. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm here for you. I'm here to shoulder that pain with you. I'm here to pray for you. I'm with you. Yeah. Whenever you need anything, just call me. Or, hey, I ha- I know this therapist or I have this friend or, hey, I know someone that can help you guys work in this specific, like, who will be your call? And I think a lot of times when we talk about friendship, we only talk about it in the context of who's going to be there for you when you're struggling. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be there with you to celebrate yeah. all that God is doing, mm-hmm. bro? Like I've noticed in my life, one of the biggest things when I broke up with, when me and my girlfriend broke up, oh, man, one of the hardest things for me was because around the time her and I broke up, a lot of good things were happening yeah. in my personal life. And I was so quick. To, I was, I, it was a habit to call her yeah. and just be like, Hey, yo, mm-hmm. so-and-so hit me up about such and such yeah. or hey, yo, like, this and this opportunity presented itself for hey yo like look at what and when we broke up bro there was like uh there was a mo- there was there was a grieving because i couldn't even fully celebrate yeah knowing that the person i wanted to celebrate with was was nowhere near yeah that i couldn't yeah, yeah. there weren't they were not a phone call away anymore mm-hmm. and it's true in friendship like bro when i some really big things happened in my life this year that i can't share yet mm-hmm. But when those phone calls came, when those opportunities presented itself, I hit y'all up. Yeah. Like, that's the first thing I wanted to do is mm-hmm. be like, hey, yo, like, I got to tell somebody about this. I got to tell somebody about this. And so um, you need that even in the marriage relationship. Like, mm-hmm. when you and your wife celebrate 15 years together, yeah. who are you going to celebrate yeah. that with? When, yeah. when you and your wife um, stop fighting or arguing about something <laughs> you've been fighting and bickering about for yeah. two. Who are you going to call and say, Hey, yo, the thing you've been praying for me about mm-hmm. the thing I've been struggling with, like, Hey, we, we, we got a new level of breakthrough here. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, man, I think friendship is essential and friendship n- is needed even when you, cause we all know those people that when they start dating someone, mm-hmm. they just disappear mm-hmm. and they come back around and we're like, Oh, it didn't, oh, it didn't, work, work, out. It didn't work out. Huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's good. Sorry, I just had to double nah, down on yeah. what you said there. Nah, but I think that's important. Why else do you think it's foolish for someone to say, well, I don't need to be intimate or deep with my friends because that's what my partner is for? Um, I think that I think that places unhealthy expectations on your partner. Mm. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think that mm-hmm. one person is meant to carry everything from you. Mm. Like they are, but, but I mean, it's Jesus and you're not dating him so like that just that puts a lot on the person like they have to know everything always respond perfectly always know how to comfort you always say the right thing always show up on time always pick up the phone always text you back and like granted again right there's a level of access that if you're with somebody that there's there's going that's going to be built but come on bro (laughs) you know what i mean like it's like what they can only do so much Don't because me. they so th- what you're saying is now they have to carry not only yourself but also theirs. Yeah. So then when you have a problem, they have to shelve theirs because they have to deal with you. <sighs> okay. Can I can I say something Good, to this yeah. here? And I'm I'm calling myself out on this. Yeah. Maybe maybe not. I may right now be single. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be that some of us are still single because of that reality? Sheesh. Because we expect our partner to be everything. We want our partner to be. A, our twin yeah to like all the music we like to like all the all the tv shows we like and that's cute to read all the books that we read to enjoy travel or f- food mm-hmm. the way we do right <laughs> <laughs> and it's like hey yo that's what friends are for like yeah yo y- your your partner might not like watching podcast episodes but you can have a friend that does. Yeah. I've shared this on, on the podcast before, but I remember one time a good friend of mine, we were in his living room hanging out and we were watching Southside Rabbi. Mm-hmm. And as we were watching Southside Rabbi, I mean, we're getting hit. We're like, ooh, that's good. Or dang, like, let, they said that a little too fast. Let's rewind that and hear that <laughs> back one time. Just having a ball, having a good time. Shout yeah. out to KB and Amin. And my friend's wife walked in the door and she looked at us in disgust. She mm-hmm. said, y'all do this for fun? Y'all, y'all listen to podcasts that talk yeah. about theology for fun. She's mm-hmm. like, couldn't be me. And I remember in my foolishness, <laughs> I remember looking to my friend. I'm in like, hey, bro, 
couldn't be me. I couldn't marry someone that can't that didn't want to watch podcast yeah. episodes with me. Bro, I remember with one of my exes, like, bro, I, I regret this so bad. I remember when, whenever like I would go over, she'd go over, like I would force her to watch sermons. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, hey, this this message, really, this message hit me. Let's watch it together. And she'd be bored half the time, bro. There's a reason you're not together. No more. <laughs> she'd be like, hey. This is so great, but like this is sermons. It. And I remember thinking to myself, like, if you can't watch a sermon with me, he was looking at her like, "What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Do you not love the Lord?" Crazy, bro. I've learned. Forgive me. Like I've learned now that like, hey man, she's not the person. My wife can't be someone I enjoy everything. It's with. not gonna be a copy of you. It it won't be. Yeah. And if you're looking for someone to love everything you love, hate everything you hate, want everything you want, pursue everything you're pursuing. Mm-hmm. You're going to be single a very long time. Probably forever. Pro- <laughs> and that's why friendship. Again, I'm, I'm just doubling down on what you're saying. But yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Any yeah. other reasons why it's toxic to be like, yo, I don't need to go that deep with a friend because or with. Yeah, with a friend because I it's have just, a partner. It stifles your growth, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just like. I mean, as as complex of, as a people as we are, yeah, I don't think it's just not fair to put that on one person, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you got two parents, ideally. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just not. I just that doesn't seem. It's just not practical at all. You know not what even I mean? a little bit. Yeah, it's just not. All right, I, I got I got some things I want to share about this a little bit. I think um. One of the reasons why I think people say. That, I don't need. To, to be intimate with a friend because that's what my spouse is for is because there's a level of security that Mm. comes with your significant other. When you say your I do's, right? Like let's think about the wedding day. Think about how sacred that is. Mm -hmm. You spend thousands of, well, most people spend thousands of dollars. You've got a, the man has a suit. The woman has a dress. You got the rings. I mean, like people are flying in from different countries, from different cities, Mm -hmm all there to celebrate your love and you make these wonderful vows towards each other for better, for worse sickness and in health for richer, or poor, for poorer. Like I vow to love you. Yeah. There's a level of like safety there. Like yeah. th- this yeah. is my person. And I, of course I'm going to go all in on sharing myself with, I mean, even, even when Adam, met Eve he's like whoa bone of my bone flesh of my flesh he's like this, this is the person for me mm-hmm. and and the bible says they were naked and unashamed they weren't just naked physically they were naked spiritually emotionally mentally they were naked with their dreams mm-hmm. naked with their feet all of that right like there was this level of intimacy where i love the way into intimacy my pastor used to call uh, or define intimacy into me see right mm-hmm. that's intimacy so I understand this idea that when you're with your wife or your husband or significant other, of course, you're going to feel more confident. You're going to feel more safe to share. But here's what I'll say. I think they're right mm-hmm. in assuming that it's safer sure, and more intimate. And this is a forever thing. Well, it should be a forever thing. Mm-hmm. But I want to rebuttal this thinking by not diminishing the sacredness of a marriage, yeah. but like uplifting the sacredness of a friendship. Hmm. I think about David and Jonathan, David and Jonathan, they too made a covenant with each other. Yeah, Bro, they literally, Jonathan made a vow to David hmm. and David made a vow to Jonathan. And even when family tried to get in the way of that, mm-hmm. when enemies try to get in the way of that, when, Bro, think about this for a second. Jonathan is meant to take the throne. He's Saul's son. He's next in line. But because of his vow to David Mm -hmm. and because he saw David the way God saw David, he humbly bowed out out of what was rightfully his and and made Mm -hmm. provision for his best friend David. to take Because he's like, I know what I'm owed. Mm -hmm. But clearly God is moving in a different direction. And because I made a covenant with David, I will protect my friend Mm. because I know his call, even if that means I'm going against my father. Bro. What what kind of what kind of friendship? That's different. (laughs) What are we 
What are we talking about, bro? Like, think about the humility. Think about the selflessness. Mm -hmm. Think about the sacrifice. Think about the commitment. Think about the vow. Think about the value of the friendship. Mm -hmm. For, for, For Jonathan to say, amen, I would love to be king. I thought I would be king. I look mm-hmm. at all the other nations. That's typically how this thing goes. Mm-hmm. The southern, t- <laughs> the son takes it. Yeah. But God has spoken. And because I've made a commitment to honor you, to serve you, to love you. Yeah. In the way God has designed you, God has made you. Amen. Mm-hmm. I know I'm about to mess up some family dynamics here. Yeah. But like, I will love you. And I will do whatever it takes to yeah. see you seated where you need to be seated Mm -hmm. and i just don't know if we have friendship like that anymore that somebody will look at that and say somebody will look at that and say that that kind of commitment is uncomfortable that's the kind of commitment you should only expect from your spouse Hmm. what do you mean they're not your husband they're not your wife and you've given your life to them in that way yeah Bro, when, when Jonathan died, David says something crazy. He says, I've known you more intimately than I've known my wives. Mm. There was this like bond. There was this intimacy. There was this closeness. And David and Jonathan display for us what it's like to choose someone and to stick by them no matter what. Mm-hmm. And before we're, bro, we, we can, there's layers to this. It's, it's one thing for Jonathan to do that and give up his, his right to be king. Mm-hmm. But Jonathan also called David out. Yeah. When David sinned with Bathsheba, mm-hmm. when David did what he was not supposed to be doing, we see Jonathan mm-hmm. lovingly correct. First of all, he knew David well enough to know how to do it. Mm. Only a friend. He he didn't sit down and be like David, smack him upside and say, yeah. "What were you thinking?" Right. He gave him a little riddle. Mm-hmm. He gave him a little parable, mm-hmm. and he got David worked up. He's like, "See, I know this guy. I know. I knew this would get him." Mm-hmm. It's like, "Hey, David, let me tell you something. You're the 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 villain in this story. I'm talking about you." Question. Yeah. Wasn't that the prophet and not Jonathan? Wasn't it Jonathan? I think that I think I think that was the. You could fact check. Me. I think it was Nathan. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're, wait, was it? I'm pretty sure, because I think Jonathan was dead by the time. <laughs> you might be right. I'm in uh, Second Samuel right Oh, now. you're right. So it was Nathan. Like, you're right. My bad. Look at me. I want them to be friends so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you changed the Bible, bro. I changed the Bible. I did what Matter of fact, fuck. he died at the cross for David. <laughs> <laughs> this is what all the false prophets do. Hilarious. Hey, but man. see, when you preach with enough passion, you get caught up. You don't even think yeah, about it. Yeah, caught up. But this is what a friend does. No. It's like, hey, question. Question. Hey, bro. He could have been like, no, that was Nathan. Yeah. I could have <laughs> hopped in the comment section. Let you out. <laughs> point proven. But I but to your point though, I do think that like there's there was a, a passion and a zeal and just like a a bond that they shared that is not it's just not common, bro. No. Like even I remember reading where they made a vow to each other where I think it was right before like David like dipped off into the wilderness for a while. Yeah. Where just the way that they spoke to each other, I like got emotional like reading it. Cause I was just like, bro, there's just so much like love and care and just like, like honestly, like God given like affection for just like, you know, such a holistic way. Holistic. Yeah. That's it's the just, word. Like it's just such a beautiful thing, bro. Yeah, man. And I, and I, if that ain't friendship, I don't want it. But this is why I feel like you can't be friends with everybody. No. Because in order for you to give yourself to someone in that way, yeah, you gotta, you it gotta. takes time, it takes commitment, it takes mm-hmm. sacrifice, it takes money, it takes energy, it takes... And it's just like... And you'll be hurt. And you will be hurt. Will, not can, will. Will be hurt. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I just think that that's... Yeah, man, I just really think that that's so important that we we don't diminish the sacredness mm-hmm. of of marriage and your partner. And it, you're right, I do think that it is more. It's it is not. I think I know it is a more intimate friendship and relationship. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a sacredness to friendship, and it isn't yeah. intimate, mm-hmm. and it isn't beautiful, and it isn't godly. You yeah. know. And so, but I think that that's the pushback. It's like, well. Of course, I'm going to invest more in my marriage than I am going to in my friendships because they're going to be there forever. Mm-hmm. Well, you can live in such a way where your friends can stick around for a while. 
Yeah. Like, I don't know about you, but I want friends that stick around for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Like this idea of friends going in and out. Yeah. That sounds stressful. Mm -hmm. That sounds chaotic. That sounds unpredictable. Yeah. And how can you create deep, intimate relationships and friendships if people are constantly in and out? Now, I'm not saying people don't move. Yeah. I'm not saying seasons don't change. I'm not saying that you don't have more responsibility. I'm not saying you see each other that like every day all the time, mm -hmm. but like you've made a vow to each other. Like I know life gets busy, but like this year I, I have time to do three trips with you maybe yeah. once a quarter or something like that. Or, you know, I know this year you've got four kids or I know this year you, you went from having three to four or whatever it is. What's your schedule looking like? We'll make it work. We'll mm -hmm. make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know? And I, and I think that that's important. It's so important. I think we got some comments that I want to, uh, coming alive. yeah, good conversation. It was the prophet, but I'm sure his friend Jonathan would cover. And <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Good, good to know that there's some, uh, some biblical literacy, the biblical literacy out here. It takes <laughs> unconditional love agape. Yeah, man. Again, continue to like, let us know what you guys think. We want you to be a part of the conversation. Um, we want you to ask your questions if you have any, but dog, that's, that's something that when I look at our culture today, I'm deeply saddened by, hmm. you know, it was Sam Coyer who said, we live in a day and age where we've turned the word friend from a noun to a verb. Hmm. How do you know someone's a friend? Well, I added him on Facebook. Hmm. I followed her on Instagram. I liked their video on TikTok. <laughs> a friendship isn't a verb. It's yeah. a, it's a person. Yeah. And I think so often we're we're confusing the amount of followers we have on Instagram mm. with the amount of friendships that we have. And your social media friendships are not the same as your real life friendship. Just because somebody likes your post Man, listen. doesn't mean they're actually your friend. I was about to get real specific. You wanna we still we can go there. I got the spirit, let me know if it's okay. Okay, man. I think in, in in short, I think that um I think different people, I think people will use just social media as a way like, oh, these are my friends. This is where I get my, my, my affirmation. This is where I get my, um, this is my community. And mm -hmm. I think that like, if you're in a space where you don't have like local people or you're not able to build or you're not in a church or you're in transition or whatever the case may, might be, I think yeah. that there's a way in which that, that happens, right? Like one of my, one of my closest friends, like we don't live, like we've never lived like in the same state, but we're just like, that's, that's my dog. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I think that it's different if you are trying to build a platform or you use your platform, just to your point as far as, because there have been people that I've seen that do that, where it's like, oh, these are my friends. These are the people who I can go to for such and such. I'm like, that's, that's, not, it. that's not it. Just because mm -hmm. like, you have influence or a platform or there's a number of people that will engage with certain types of things, I'm just like, yo, that don't, that don't really mean nothing. I could pay for that. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's not... You can't you can't see that as like oh this is my source of relationships or friendships or whatever because like it's not it's not always real yeah you know what I mean not at all yeah not at all I I've met um I've met quite a few influencers that are that are lonely yeah and I'm like dang they began likes though but they're You'd lonely know. bro yeah they're lonely and mm -hmm. so those are two separate things now mm -hmm. I feel like we can spend a good amount of time talking about why you need a friendship outside of marriage yeah. But why is it important to have a healthy friend in marriage or in a dating relationship? How much time? We got? By the way, that 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 actually is a required of mine. What do you mean? I, you know how when people go on dates, they're trying to okay, what's your credit score? Sure. Do you know? Do they smell nice? Are they you know? Mm -hmm. Are they driven? Doing all the do they love the Lord? Yeah. One of my requirements: they gotta have friends and good friends. And they got to be a good friend yeah. because of all the things we just talked about, mm -hmm. how essential a friendship is and biblical a friendship is yeah. and how a, a marriage won't even work without a friendship. You know what I mean? Not without well. friendships, you know, but like, can we talk about this? Cause I, I, I think that like, man, bro, like, yeah, like in a dating relationship, if y'all can't be friends, it's not, it's, what, what are we here for? Bro, and this is why, and I know a lot of Christians do this. That's why it's not good to have sex in a dating relationship yeah. because you think you have this intimate, deep relationship and bond with someone when you don't, you're clouded by mm -hmm. 
the physical stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? And then if you actually stop having sex, you start to realize, oh, I actually don't really like this person. <laughs> We don't really have a lot it's of kind of ugly for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, what happens when you get older, and they're not as yeah. attractive? Or let's say yeah. like somebody gains weight, or let's mm-hmm. say like again, you want to always be working on yourself physically, yeah. mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Like I, I hope like you only get better with time, mm-hmm. but life happens, and that's sure. not always the case. But like, if you can't laugh together, oh my gosh, bro. if you if you can't support each other, if you can't listen to each other, if you don't know how to ask good questions for each other, if if, if you don't know how to um, um, love, I mean, like friendship really brings life to a dating relationship, bro. I'll talk about my, and th- I saw this from my parents growing up. There was like four of us, so six of us together. And so, you know, my parents were in ministry, so we didn't have money like that. And so whenever we wanted to do a family vacation, they weren't able to afford all of us to get on a, on a plane that we couldn't afford flights. Mm-hmm. So we would road trip everywhere, which it actually turned out great for me because I love road trips now. But bro, I remember we'd be driving to DC. It'd be like a 15, 16 hour drive from Minnesota to DC. My God. And bro, I would, I would fall asleep in the car to my parents talking and I would wake up to them talking. Mm. And I remember being eight, nine, 10, 11 years of age. Vivid. I vividly remember like waking up and thinking to myself, they're still talking. I, I want to do that with my wife, mm. bro. That was like an actual thought. Like yeah. I remember I would come home from school and my parents were on the couch talking for hours. And then I would go home, go upstairs, do my homework, go outside, play with friends, come back in for dinner. My parents are still talking. They haven't left their, the, mm. the, the seat that they're in. I remember thinking to myself, bro, they don't get tired of each other. Yeah. They're just talking. They don't get tired of each other. Bro, and I and I remember like from a young age, I've always told myself, like, if I can't marry my best friend, mm-hmm. I don't want it. Because mm-hmm. what happens when you're done kissing? What happens when you're done with the date? Yeah. You know, what happens after, you know, like what do you do when you guys are paying bills, when you're cleaning the house, mm-hmm. when the car gets the oil needs to be changed, when you're raising kids, like what relationship do you have yeah. in order to enjoy the everyday life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would agree, bro. I think that's that's kind of where I go to as far as like why that's important for me. That's also a requirement. Like if we can't be friends, I think that I'm just what are we what are we doing? What are we here for? Because I think it's not it's not just and this is partially from like what I've seen modeled for me. Um, it's not just like the dates and the romantic parts and the the no. the cute moments that get posted and the pictures and the and it's also not just like sad moments and difficulty and whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's just like, yo, this the housework, cool. All right, cool. But like with some of my best friends, I can just sit and I don't I don't feel pressure to force a conversation or to talk or to okay, what about it's just like we're just <laughs> we're like just yo, we're chilling, we're, we're, we're vibing, cool, bro. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like if I'm if I'm saying I that I will commit my life to you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You know what I'm saying? Like good and bad, ugly or beautiful, rain, shine, like you're the person I want to do that with. We, I, you better be my friend, bro. Like we can't flirt forever. Duh. <laughs> That's on my list. I'll try. You can try, bro. <laughs> it gets old, bro. All right. You cute. You cute. You beautiful. You beautiful. He said it gets old. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> can we talk about the Timberwolves getting getting knocked out? Oh my gosh. Can we talk about how ghetto this new Tyler Perry movie is? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Can we can we can we talk about the new yeah. taco spot that just opened yeah. up down the street? Yeah. And yeah. and bro, let me tell you, like you wouldn't believe. I got this phone call from my manager, mm-hmm. and they said so and so said doing this. And yeah. how do, how do you want me to react to that? What do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Like how are you, bro? Like yeah. I need someone to actually do life with me, and yeah. a good friend can do life well with you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like flirting is not gonna help you navigate a big decision. No. You know what I mean? It won't. F- flirting That's is, true. Is, is not going to help you unpack the trauma that you had mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Flirting and, and romance and eros is, is not going to help you. The boy brought up the Greek. <laughs> it, it, it's not going to help you dissect uh, the scriptures. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like eros love is not going to pay the bills. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's this, there's a level that comes with friendship. Yeah. That is so good and helpful and beneficial mm-hmm. for, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, and here's the thing too, bro. Like this is why it's important to be a good friend and how that spills over into marriage. Yeah. Like a good friend 
forgives quickly. Yeah. A good friend yeah. overlooks offense. My pastor used to always say mature friendship leaves room for the other person to make a mistake. Hmm. And so in a marriage relationship, what happens when I drop the ball? Yeah. Do I have a friend that's able to overlook the offense? Do I have a friend that's able to forgive? Do I have a friend that's willing to sit down and say, hey, talk to me about that? What happened? Yeah, yeah. Are they going to give me the silent treatment? Oh, my gosh. Man. Stonewall. Can't they're going to just go off Can't the rail. Re- like, or do I have someone that's going to, hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk through this. Like, yeah. help me understand. What's Only a friend can do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so Eros love is not going to raise the kids. It's really not. It'll, it's make gonna, them. it'll make them. It'll create some bills for you. Oh, my God. If you want to get real. But it won't pay the bills and it won't raise the kids. My God. A healthy friendship will, though. Yeah. A friend that considers the other party. Mm-hmm. A friend that long suffers with the other party. Yeah. A friend that wants the best for the other party. Mm-hmm. A friend that's going to champion and support and cheer on the other party. A friend that's going to actually make room for mistakes. A friend that's going to bring out the best yeah. in the other. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like a friend. Yeah. These are all qualities of a friendship. And mm-hmm. so for me, if you don't have healthy friends around you. That's kind of a it, that, that kind of shows you what it'll probably be like for you. Yeah. And again, people are like, well, I can do that. I just feel safer to do that with my mm-hmm. partner. Well, are you going to practice on your partner? I was just about to say. <laughs> And like there, there are certain things that like I think you you're gonna learn in a in a marriage in a dating relationship, right? Yeah. Because that's that's the place that you're gonna exercise certain things and walk certain things out. Yeah. But some stuff, I'm just like, even like something for me, like with, I can I can be a very serious person, and so I appreciate friends that I can just like we can laugh and joke about something that's frustrating you're in the midst of like a difficulty. Yes. And so as difficult as life is, uh, listen, bro, I life haven't been is... around that long, but already. Life be lifing. It's it's a little tough. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And so to have to to pair my life with somebody else in the process of becoming one and continuing sanctification, we we're gonna have to laugh. I need somebody that like we can be like, man, it's it's like we gotta do something, bro. Bro, low key, I you know what I'm saying? You know what's what's a flex? Huh? At the end of the day, when you're in bed with your wife and you're just watching TikTok videos together. Can't relate, but sounds like a great time. I can't too, but I'm just I just I've heard I've I've heard it's great. I've heard it's great. I've sh- now in my time, I've shared a few videos. <laughs> That's been fun. You know what I'm saying. So I can only imagine. Talking about so speaking of sharing, huh? A no. friend knows how to share a burden. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> a friend, yeah. a friend, a friend knows how to share mm-hmm. advice. A friend knows how to share. Their time. A friend yeah. knows how to share their finances. A friend knows how to <laughs> share their gifts. A friend yeah. knows how to share the last slice of the. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I, I, I really do think, man, the better friend you are, the better partner you are. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because if nothing else, it refines you. It does. And, and like, I mean, it, it gives you practice. It helps people to be like, hey, bro, you tweaking? He's like, all right. Well, when I show up in here, let me make sure. Yeah. I'm better at such and such. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's just like. They kind of go hand in hand, bro. They do. I think about the gospel and I think about how Jesus says, you know, I'm not just your master. I'm your friend for I've mm-hmm. shared all these things with you. And and I love how Jesus says that because what he's getting at is a friend is someone that shares truth, shares wisdom, shares life, shares the intimate parts mm-hmm. of and and I feel like I think sometimes we struggle with sharing our lives with our partners because we haven't shared our lives with a friend. Hmm. Um, it's there is no magic pill. Like I, so, I studied psychology with the emphasis in marriage and family counseling. I remember my marriage and family counseling professor, Dr. Hansen. Shout out to him. Said this. He said, um, "A lot of the times, people think that the wedding day will change everything." Hmm. And he's saying. He, he, I remember him saying in class, really, the wedding day serves as a magnifying glass. What you mm. receive on the wedding day is a magnifying glass. And everything you experience in the dating relationship is only going to be 10 x mm. And so in the dating relationship, if they had a hard time sharing secrets, it's only going to be 10 x in the marriage. In the dating relationship, if they had a hard time sharing their heart, it's only going to be 10 x in the ma- in the marriage. If they had a hard time um, sharing their wounds 
or their scars yeah. or their traumas. It's only going to 10 X in the, there is no magic pill for a good friend. It takes time. It mm. takes trial. It takes effort. It takes trying, it takes failing. It takes time. And I feel like to say, Oh, marriage will change my husband. Yeah. Marriage will change my wife. It's just unrealistic. Mm. And I think that we have to be honest with ourselves and we have to recognize and realize that if we want to have a partner that shares their life, yeah. shares their secrets, share their wounds, shares their dreams with us, we're going to have to see that spill out in the dating relationship and within other, within other relationships and contexts too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, man, I, I, I do think that that's a thing. Uh, we, I love Shamira. Is that how you say your name? She's, she's here. She's she the one, she's the one. Lighting she's it up here. Right now? I agree. Forgiveness quickly is a good display of true love versus conditional love based on no tension. Um, yeah, there's five of y'all in there. Make sure to hit the like button. Type your name. Not, say where you're subscribe. from. Subscribe. Let us know who you say are, something. where you're from, and type in questions. I want this to be a little interactive. Um, and it helps algorithmically. It does. That's a T word. It, uh, but anyway, <laughs> we but, can we can riff continue riffing on this. But I think this can. is going to be the episode for next week. And then we're just Q and A with people yeah. out here. We might post these as individual clips. Yeah. Based off answers or what have you. But until next time, family, peace and grace.